Hi, everybody. Welcome to Halftime Live on Bruce Sports. We welcome you inside the studio for the sexiest sports lunch you're ever going to have. That is Tanner Burke, of course. Look at him. Just oof, a sexy man full of all kinds of sporty <laughs> sexiness. It's going to be a good day, yes, Tanner. Yes, it's going to be a great day. It oh, already is goodness. a great day. It is. It's been a it lot of fun day. already on Bruce Sports. You've had yeah. some great programming, and by God, we're going to do even Connor, better than that Connor Cacciatolo came on pick six earlier this morning with me, which was a lot of fun. It's yeah, always it good to have, have a new face on and... You know, see see who's out there. So Absolutely. I'm glad he could come on today. Absolutely. Jamie and I, of course, were having some fun in the morning brew today as well. So it's been a great day overall. It's been a but, fun uh, Tuesday. As we do here on Halftime, we try to give you the biggest and brightest trending sports news stories uh, in a quick, bite-sized manner. That way you can give yeah. us your thoughts, your feelings, and move on with your day because we know you're a busy folks just like we are as well. Yeah, too, 100%. Tanner. Absolutely. So as, of course, as we go along, remember to find the give us your comments in the section below here. Hit the share button as well, too. We love hearing from you guys. And I make do. sure you react to us, whether you think Tanner's hair is overrated or underrated. I um, want to know. I mean, it's looking I not too know. bad today. I think it's you're okay. like mid- you're like mildly rated today, I in just, my opinion. I, I need a haircut. Fair enough. I need probably need a, a nice shower. We'll work on it. <laughs> we'll work on it. We're going to be joined by Lee Nevis as well, too, in our second segment to uh, recap what took place for the U.S. women's national team as they beat Russia yes. very handily the last couple of days. Plus, the United States, North America as a whole, is trying to post the 2026 World Cup. She's going to give us a little bit of insight about that as well. Of course. Of Trevor course. already chiming in on Facebook. Good, Good day to you, Trevor. Good, Good to see to you. Adam. Adam's watching as Adam, well. Adam, Liz, Trevor, people Jillian are piling in. is out Come there, Come on down, folks. So be sure to comment. Let us know you're here. Water is fine. Uh, give us the little share. Why not? Love it. I'll share it out Love there, that share though. business. Uh, first, a couple of big <laughs> things right off the bat here on a Transformation Tuesday here, Tanner. Some good stuff. Why are you laughing already? Trevor says, Tanner, you should take a dip in the pool. Actually, the pond would be better for you. That's a Caddyshack ah, quote. There you go. Already referencing what happened. Already referencing an earlier so. show. That's awesome. a true loyal fan right Perfect. there. I love it. Oh, my goodness. Well, it was, a, it was a joyous night in Chicago last night as the it Chicago was. Cubs raised the banner after 108 yes. years of a drought. 108 years. The fans were beside themselves. And they actually ended up pulling out the victory as well, too, 3-2 to two against the yep. L.A. Dodgers, a recap of the NLCS mm-hmm. last night. Not bad. It's a fun night in Chicago. It was a rain delay. It was kind of cold and nasty, very Midwestern in April. but It was gross. It was. But I mean, it was also the Cubs playing as well, too, so that was kind of gross, depending on if you support the Cubs or not. Yes. Be that as it may, though, the game ends up being a big uh, turnout overall. Fans are beside themselves. But how do you react as a whole from a casual baseball perspective fan, seeing somebody that hasn't won a championship in 108 years finally get to raise that banner? It was a very emotional stadium, I feel like, last night. I'm not a Cubs fan by any means, but I, it, it is, I, feel, I feel for them. You know, I, I, don't, I have yet to see a championship for any of my sports teams that I root for, and uh, it's, it's good to see. I mean, the Black, they had the Blackhawks, they have the Bears, so they've seen championships in their days, but the Cubs were different. The Cubs have always been different. Right. 108 years uh, without a championship, the curse, whatever. Uh, but it, it, it's exciting for the city. It's exciting for the fans. And there, there aren't many fan bases out there that are more loyal than the Chicago Cubs. So. That is a valid point. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about loyalty, the Chicago Cubs, it takes a lot to go through what those fans have the last you know, century. It's hard to say. Some people say decade, but literally yes. century is what it has been since the Chicago Cubs uh, have won a World Series. So congratulations to the Cubs organization. Uh, definitely on the up and up. Anthony Rizzo hit that uh, game, that yeah, walk off single in the ninth. I mean, it was what good a for them. what a night to to have a home opener too. I mean, like you said, the inclement weather causing a little some delays. It but, was, yeah. Uh, that's going to just add to the whole memory. And then the banner itself. I saw each of the players were able to get a hand on the banner as yeah, they were raising it. Yeah, that's memorable, up, right there. Fun. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, Anthony Rizzo with a walk-off single to beat the Dodgers is, you know... It's, it's classic right there. Yeah, it, it had to happen that way, so... Exactly. It would have almost been a little sad if it hadn't happened that yes. way. Cubs will also receive their World Series rings today. They're going to get 108 diamonds in their World Series ring. Are you serious? I'm absolutely wow. serious because of the fact that it's been 108 years, of course, since they won the World have they, Series. Have they shown what it's I've not seen like a yet? single picture of it yet. Hopeful that Keep they're going to release it once they uh, yeah. show it tonight. Very I mean, cool. You, of course, can see like the, the mock-up fakes at times as well, yeah. too, but very rarely do teams release the rings before they actually come out. Yes. So we'll let you know. We'll probably have the latest for that tomorrow uh, here on Halftime, so make sure to come back at that point. A couple of comments driving in here as well, too. Aaron saying, hey, guys, uh, Adam, growing up on the north side of Chicago and being a Red Sox fan, I was like, oh, my God, finally. I can hear him saying that in the <laughs> Boston accent there. Trevor says, if the Cubs and the Cavs can win a championship, the Bills can, right? 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 Yes. 
Absolutely. Yeah, celebrate Absolutely. Chicago also saying, it was an amazing night. I, yes. I'm sure it was. I'm sure Chicago I'm sure as was. a whole is just beside themselves with excitement. And let's see if maybe they're one of their they, – they, people forget about the professional soccer teams there too, so maybe the Fire can win a championship. It's been a while since they have. The Chicago Red Stars are down there as well too for the Women's League. They're always competitive every year too. Yes. So Chicago is definitely not hurting in the championship department, and everybody doesn't all. even need to talk about the Chicago Bulls and their – numerous championships. They have the 85 Bears, too. So. And the 85 Bears. So I don't want to hear a single Each person from Chicago that complains. Each one of their franchises has won a, a championship in the last 30 years. Yeah, so I don't want to hear a single word from anybody from Chicago that's like, we yeah. never win. Shut up. Your city Hold as a beer. whole is fine. <laughs> Hold my beer. Speaking of holding your beer, if you had $3.7 billion, how would you feel? I'm sorry, how much? $3.7 billion. Would 3. you feel good about having that much money? Dollars. I don't know what I would do with it. Well, that's how much the New York Yankees are worth, according to Forbes. What? Yeah, so Forbes has come out ranking the top franchises sell, in baseball again. I would again. sell high. He would sell high. There's, there's no way. $3.7 billion, billion dollars is the worth there's of the no New York way. Yankees, according to there's Forbes. There's no way. Uh, it's right. strict off, strictly off of their historic value. Yes, uh, of course. Of course, yeah. $3.7 uh, billion. The dollars. most valuable yeah. franchises in the last 20 years. Uh, each year, the Yankees have been the worth the most money, um, this time being almost $1 billion more than the next most valuable team, the L.A. Dodgers, who are valued at $2.75 billion. Unbelievable. The league average is $1.54 billion, which is 19% higher than it used to be last year. How do you react to something like this when you hear how much, this stu- how much the these teams aver- are worth? They're twice the league average. They are twice the league average, basically wow. because they are riding that, that, that curve that has been the history that is the Yankees. Derek Jeter is sitting at home counting his four hundred million dollars that he made in his career, going, "Yeah, you know, three point seven billion, four hundred million dollars, four hundred million dollars he made between his contracts and endorsements throughout oh. his entire career. He's worth now around two hundred twenty-one million dollars net worth. He oh my God, after taxes. Oh my God. Yeah. Trevor says, speaking of beers, we don't have any frothy beverages in front of us today. It is. It is. It's, it's, it's a Transformation Tuesday. Tanner's trying to get back into his body, his 2011 body, for those of you that understand that context. We're just trying to just – Trying to get myself trying to just back. Get back trying to, to get out of the dad bod. The dad bod phase is, is out. Being hot and sexy again is back in. It's so true. I, need to transition I think you have to be a dad to have a dad bod, again. I feel so, like. I need to, need to get back to my 2012 shape where I was 175 pounds and – I, all I did was eat, drink, and Work out. breathe protein shakes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Adam says they should. The, our lower ticker should actually say uh, "greedy clowns" instead, or lower. Greedy no, they clowns. should lower. Oh, they should lower the ticket prices. I'm sorry, I know how to read. Lower the ticket prices. Those greedy clowns. Yes. And Adam, Aaron also says, odd considering the MLB is a slowly dying league. It is, but they're certainly holding on to their money. It's kind of like the great Gatsby where you've got old, you know, East Egg and West Egg or New Egg and Old Egg or yeah. some egg, hard-boiled, sunny-side up egg. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's Hungry. a lot of eggs. A lot of eggs. I love breakfast, by I the way. I do, too. Brunch? Are you brunch or breakfast? I'm a brunch guy. You're a brunch guy. But only on, only on Sundays. Maybe Saturday mornings, but usually only on Sundays. Mm, understandable. Liz says she wants the 2011 Tanner back as well. Yes, 100%. So we'll have to get a picture. 100%. If you should send me a picture of the 2011 Tanner, and we'll post that here in a little while so oh people God. can understand oh. just how sexy the, the 2011 Tanner <laughs> actually is. Oh, make, my goodness. Make Tanner, make Tanner in shape again. I believe that should be the campaign. That should be the anthem for Bruce Sports yes. moving forward, Make basically. Tanner's body great again. Hey, you're, I'm done with you that. You have a nice body as a whole, but I mean. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I know. I'm sorry. I don't want <laughs> to count our chickens before there's eggs or something yes, like that. Of but yeah, either way, let us know your thoughts about the Cubs, the Major League Baseball. Hashtag make Tanner great again. I'm all about that. Liz says, want Tanner physically 2011, but mentally 2017. Yes, yes. 100%. Yep, yep. 100%. And Adam says, watch out, Baxter. The wife is going wild. And, <laughs> and Liz, yes, people are apparently, don't read too much into it. Okay, guys, we don't need to make this a bigger deal than it actually is. We do need to make a big deal of our next cor- of our correspondent, though, Lee Neva. She's one of yeah. our awesome women's soccer correspondents. Uh, and she gets the opportunity to join us here uh, on halftime uh, as we continue to speed through the day here. Lee, a very good day to you. Welcome to halftime. How are you today? Hey, guys. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's great to have you on, Lee. Of course, uh, the big news coming from the soccer world here in the United States is the joint bid that Canada, Mexico, and the United States are all trying to host the 2026 World Cup, the men's side of it. The women's side is yet to announce some of their upcoming fixtures. But what was your immediate reaction as a fan of U.S. soccer hearing this tri-nation bid to host something so monumental as the World Cup? 
You know, I think it's a great idea um, to have all three countries kind of do a joint bid because, and I apologize, apparently the city of Louisville has decided that they want to test a tornado alarm right now. So I was just you, about to ask, oh, Lee, you need right. to get to cover there, but it's all good. <laughs> Continue. I forgot on Tuesdays, once a month, they test them. So I apologize for that. No but, worries. Um, right. Regardless, I think it's a great idea for all three countries to do a joint bid because I think it gives a chance for Canada and Mexico, um, two countries who probably wouldn't have the best chance um, just being, you know, a solo outright uh, bid. I thought that to actually include the U.S. in the bid um, gives them a much better chance at hosting the World Cup. And I think that it'll be great for, you know, North America as a whole to have a joint bid. So I was psyched. <laughs> And I feel like, too, like from a logistical standpoint, I mean, I don't think Mexico could have done it on their own. I don't think Canada could have done it on their own. You could have, I heard there was rumors of the Mexico United States joint bid. And then I feel like Canada is just kind of the awkward stepchild that's like, guys, I'm still technically on the same continent as you. Can I also maybe host a game or two if that's, if that's not too much to ask? But I mean, does Canada being a part of this bid do anything aside from just add another name? Canada's not a, a men's soccer powerhouse. If this was the women's side, I'd be like, well, yeah, duh, this makes total sense. But. Why, why does Canada have to be a part of this bid? Um, you know, I kind of agree there. I don't think that they had to be a part of the bid, but I think that with the success that they had from the 2015 Women's World Cup, um, obviously there were still some issues with, you know, turf and not all grass fields, which will have to be addressed. Um, but I think that they were just like, hey, like, we did really good at that. Can we just, like, come hang out? Which, you know, I think is fine. But I don't think that Canada was an integral part of this bid, but I am really psyched that Mexico is going to be um, on the bid as well. So, well, from a from a pure uh, sports value standpoint, and for the for the game of soccer, what would something like this mean to the countries of, I mean, Canada or the U.S. if they could host? I mean, I think that it's one of the only ways that this sport can grow. Uh, is, I mean, these events, the World Cup, Absolutely. the Olympics, and to host it, I think would really give a jump start to. Uh, the value of the sport and when it comes to the fans of the United States here? Oh, 100%. I think that, I mean, the U.S., I believe that whenever they hosted the World Cup in 1994, they still hold the record for best attendance ever in the history of, you know, the World Cup. But I think that if, you know, all three of these countries are able to come together and actually get the World Cup to come here again in 2026, I think it 100% solidifies the sport as you know extremely legit in america and it would help tremendously grow the sport as a whole so yeah and that's definitely the big thing i mean soccer started to take off in the united states after they hosted the 1994 world cup i think people kind of forget about the fact that the u.s did host that back in 94 i mean the even the women as well too uh, i forget it was the 98 world cup i believe when they played against china uh, in the rose bowl as well too i could be could be off on my on my late 90s my 99, 99 i'm sorry that's right i forget they're on the odd the odd we won. It's no big deal. <laughs> i'm sorry we, the u.s still won so does it really matter what year it was i mean we've, we've won three exactly. world cups the u.s has won three world cups take take your pick it doesn't really matter <laughs> Speaking of the Women's World uh, Cup and the women's national team as a whole, the United States got a chance to play Russia recently in two international friendlies. We got to see Rose Lavelle finally get on the score sheet as well, too. Uh, just an overall butt whooping. I believe if we were if we were playing aggregate, I believe it was nine to one would have been the final score between the two games. But your takeaways from the roster Jill Ellis assembled and the ultimate result against what looked like a very poor assembled Russia team. Um, I think that overall the roster that she brought in was very even on both sides of, you know, new call-ups and new faces and a really decent amount of veterans. Obviously, there were a few um, injuries that probably would have been called up or we wouldn't have had seen as many new faces with Tobin Heath, Morgan Bryan, and Lindsey Horan were um, available to play if they weren't injured. Um, but overall, I think that this was kind of a roster that we weren't really looking for results. We were more just looking at actual performances of players. And I think that it kind of is unfortunate that I thought poor Russia just was not prepared at all. Their defending was not very good. So the results that we got were amazing, but I do wish that we would have been able to have a little bit more competition from the Russian side because they, they were just so tired by the end of the game. And it was just, they just looked it, awful, honestly. Oh my gosh. It was just, it was really, really bad. And 
you know, but I was excited to see the four back come back. We don't have the three back anymore. Um, I thought that, you know, you can make an argument saying that the U.S. looks a lot better in the four back, but also it's very hard to judge when you are a, against a team that wasn't very prepared. True. Uh, when it comes to, I mean, going back to the, the World Cup bid, what goes into the process of hosting a World Cup? Like, how, how can the U.S. or Canada, what do they have to do to win out the bid? I don't know really what goes into the process. So, um, Well, I think that one of the big concerns, especially with Canada on the bid, is the whole turf field versus grass field debate. I think that... Unfortunately, FIFA is completely against having, you know, turf fields for a World Cup when it comes to the men. I, apparently, they don't care that much for women. <laughs> um, but, which was, I mean, this was an issue during the 2015 Women's World Cup, which is yes. why I brought it up. So I think that it, in order for them to actually make a legit bid, I think that they have to kind of reassure FIFA that they are willing to, you know, have all grass fields. Um, I think that we have to prove that we have the infrastructure. And I think that in America, that wouldn't be so much of an issue as it would be um, with Canada or possibly Mexico. Um, but I think the the infrastructure and definitely just the quality of playing fields is definitely something that they need to work on. Yeah, and that was definitely been a debate for a very long time. That's why sometimes you'll see the international friendlies played in football fields instead of actual soccer-specific stadiums at times, not only from a capacity side, but also from the fact that they have the natural grass on their field as well, too. A couple of comments on Facebook. Aaron wants to know if we're talking to Katy Perry. It certainly looks like it, that's yes. for sure. <laughs> I mean, Aaron, I love you. <laughs> I mean, she certainly looks like Katy Perry. I mean, I don't. I, the first time we met Lee, I was like, I had to do a double take, and I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait Do I minute. know you from somewhere? You look familiar. <laughs> you're not. You're not riding a massive tiger into the Super Bowl halftime show. Have you given? The, show. I was gonna say. Have you no. given? A, have you given a halftime show at the Super Bowl recently? recently, recently? <laughs> can you can you sing a couple songs for me? Then I might know. But no. uh, uh, Adam also says that he was very. Pu or, I'm sorry. Aaron says that he was pumped. The U.S. beat Russia. Yes. And then Adam says if if MLS if the MLS really Adam if the MLS <laughs> is smart they would strongly support this and involve Liga MX in their funding. And Liz also says turf versus grass is so, so different. I completely, completely agree with you on that one. But, uh, Lee, we got to let you run. But any closing thoughts about uh, how the U.S. fared and uh, also the upcoming bid as a whole from what we talked about? Um, definitely just I am so psyched that Rose Lavelle has been an absolute beast. She has absolutely defied all expectations. She is such a bright light. And the children are our future <laughs> for the U.S. women's team. I'm wow. so psyched to have her. She's amazing. So that's my final thought. I'll just leave it. <laughs> Uh, Rose Lavelle is an absolute joy as well, too. We had her on two up front here on Brew Sports last week, and she's just an absolute joy to, to, to have a conversation with. But, uh, Lee, where can people find your writing and find you on social media as well? You can find me on Twitter at Lee Nevis, and you can find my writing at backlinesoccer.com. All right, Lee. Always a pleasure. We'll talk to you shortly. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. There goes Lee Nevis here on Halftime. Good to hear from her. Good to get that insight as well as we move along with the program, Tanner. Uh, any takeaways at all from what Lee had to throw at us? Uh, I think, it, I mean, to, to host the World Cup would be huge be amazing. for the United States and for, for MLS even. I mean, when it comes to soccer, the only times that you see people really diving into it who are, you know, if at, at all casual soccer fans – uh, is the World Cup and the Olympics. So well, to host it. it would be, I think, a, a major step in the right direction towards the MLS, or MLS <sighs> being a top tier. Well, it, it's very, it's very much like, you know, when the Masters of the World Series, or, I mean, I always go back to church, like when it's Christmas or Easter, like people only care, like last yep. day of the Masters, people only care about, you know, Game 7 of the World Series or yep, Game 7 true. of the NBA Finals from a casual perspective. When the World Cup comes up, all of a sudden you've got people throwing scarves and wearing jerseys being like oh my gosh like Pirlo he's my favorite yeah. or like these other guys I'm like he doesn't even play anymore but yeah but it's good to see that the soccer people still continue to grow and I mean I think that the, if the United States does end up securing this bid it's going to be a huge thing uh, for the growth of soccer continued granted we're still many a year away uh, even if they do get the bid but it would still be a huge thing nonetheless I agree and Trevor says not a huge soccer fan but I would be stoked beyond belief if the US host of the World Cup would try and catch a game or two absolutely I'd try and get I'd try and go oh oh absolutely I would try and go absolutely so we um <laughs> we've been able to pull up some pictures here Tanner 
Uh, is oh this is this 2011 Tanner Burke? This is 2000. This is 2013, 13. at least in this picture. 2013. So yep. there's Tanner Burke back in 2013. If you wanted to know about the uh, the the man, the myth, the legend that was, I looked good. You look real good. <laughs> you look sexy. Yeah, I dressed look, as uh, like hot. I, I went as Wolverine, and I was like. I, I mean, all I did was grab the claws, and it was great. But this one, this mean, one, this, this one doesn't even look like you. It doesn't. It doesn't. Like is you look like you look like a guy named like Ryan or something. Is that 2012. Uh, 2013 again. 2013. 2013 Four again. Four years. You literally look Four like years. you should be like named Ryan. I was probably or... like a, a soaking wet 168 pounds in that yeah. picture. I mean, you look good though. I mean, what happened? Did you just? I stopped just, running. Did you just discover alcohol or what? what <laughs> I think uh, that was part of it. What was your I, I started enjoying this. food too much. No, really what happened, I mean, I, I would run like five miles a day, and then uh, I busted my knee, and I couldn't. You busted it I wide had to open. find other ways to exercise, and then ultimately hmm. with school and work and everything, I t- couldn't have time for it. Didn't have time for it anymore. What a bummer. So, what a bummer. But we're working on it. We're getting yeah. back. Uh, Trevor says, pre-cheeseburgers, Tanner Burke. Yes. 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 Now I'm three cheeseburgers, Tanner Burke. Three cheeseburgers. <laughs> hey, it's all about you know moderation. We got to get you down to yes. two, then we'll just get you just to one Big Mac. Yeah, you can't you can't just you can't just, can't just cut, cut it cold, cold turkey, turkey no. because that'd be a terrible idea. You know, I'm still you'd eating rebel cold, and start, I'd start eating things. cold turkey. I would not recommend that. The FDA says no to that. I the believe. FDA says no to that. Okay. Do not eat cold turkey. Okay. All what right, Tanner, uh, the sports world um, for football fans got excited yesterday because the NFL finally released the preseason schedule. They uh, did. The Hall of Fame game yes. is, of course, going to be around the corner as well. It might actually happen this year. It didn't happen yeah. last year, if you remember, for those that are Packers and Colts fans. I knew a lot of people that went to the game. Just was it to, the weather? It was the, it was the field. The, oh, the, 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 the paint right. on the field solidified, and they couldn't play the games. That That's just makes no stupid. sense, and it was, like, rock hard. So dumb. Absolutely stupid if you're the NFL. Like, you literally have had nothing but preparing for this game, and then the mixture of the paints somehow just completely goes straight out the window. It's awful. Makes no sense to me. Be that as it may, though, there's a lot of fun games coming up here in the NFL preseason that I wanted. You know, we each have some of our picks that we want to talk about, at least three games uh, that we're excited for. And you, yeah. can, and you can kind of see them here up on the screen right now. I've got Cowboys, Cardinals, Chargers, Rams, Giants, Jets, yeah, and you've got three big I games as well. Seahawks, there, Chargers, Rams, Raiders, Chiefs, Seahawks. Do you want to talk about why you chose a uh, couple of your, your absolutely? Picks? Yeah, so I mean, Cowboys, Cardinals is the Hall of Fame game, so I think it's always good to just get that first game of football absolutely back under your belts. Um, the Chargers, Rams is the L.A. Bowl, the first time they're going to play in the Coliseum as yep. teams of the L.A. area. Will that mean, like, I want to know which team is going to actually get supported more. Are the Rams fans going to cheer louder or are the Chargers fans going to cheer louder? It's technically a home and away game for both teams. Yes. Kind of a weird thing when you think about it. And then, of course, I'm always a big fan of the Jets Giants because, similar to the Chargers Rams, they share the same stadium. But I also want to watch the Brandon Marshall narrative as well, too, where he probably, I want to know if he walks into the Giants locker room before, the, or into the Jets locker room before the game and starts to get dressed and be like, oh, awkward, sorry, <laughs> and then goes out. That's well, what I, I'm looking forward to the most out of those. Games. I, uh, I, have, I have a couple as well. I mean, you can only look too far, so far into the preseason, but there, there are fun storylines for a couple of these. So the, C, the Seattle Seahawks playing at the Los Angeles Chargers uh, in week one. It'll be interesting because they're playing the L.A. Chargers. Uh, their temporary home until 2019 is the 30,000-seat StubHub Center. So obviously that's a third the size of most NFL stadiums. Yes. Um, so that'll be interesting to watch. The venue was built for soccer, so it'll be cool to watch watch that in kind of a smaller venue. Uh, and then I also have the uh, L.A. Rams at Oakland Raiders. So it's the it's the uh, Southern California sound off. That's going to be a fun off, one so. too. Yeah, I mean the Rams Raiders. I mean who knows what the Raiders are going to look like at that point? Will Marshawn Lynch be on the team? Yes. Will the Raiders? Will he be on the Raiders? Will he be on the Rams? Yeah. Will he be? In Mexico, I don't know where Marshawn Lynch is going to be. Nobody knows. Uh, And then I have, for my last pick, I have the Kansas City Chiefs at Seattle Seahawks, not because I care about either of those teams, but just because this is almost certainly the first time we will see Tony Romo as the network's number one analyst alongside Jim Nance from from CBS. Hello, friends. Jim Nance here with uh, you. It'll be interesting to watch Tony Romo and Jim Nance. I'm looking commentary. forward to it. I think this preseason certainly is going to be very telling. Uh, one of the other games that I didn't put on there is going to be literally any time the, the Cleveland Browns take the field for the first time. The Saints-Browns week one. Miles That'll Garrett. be very telling. If it is Miles Garrett, if it is Mitch Trubisky on that team, if it is Leonard Fournette, uh, will Richard Sherman be on the Saints at that point maybe from a possible trade you know, perspective? The Who Vegas odds knows? have him at 3-1 to one to join the Saints. 
I really don't know who's going to end up where at that point. Yes. But, I mean, it's very realistic that Richard Sherman could be starting week one with the New Orleans Saints. But I really just – I'm going to – the preseason, I know it doesn't count for anything, but I want to know what Cleveland does. And I'm going to be keeping an eye on it just because they've already made the offensive lineman adjustments. Mm-hmm. How will they then react going forward? Your thoughts and your thoughts out there. <laughs> uh, I mean – Cleveland's not going to make a direct turnaround this year with with the number one overall pick, no matter who they draft. I mean, Miles Garrett is going to make their team better. He's not going to be. It's not you're not going to Cleveland no. and saying we need to we need to game plan. You will game plan against this guy, but you're not threatened by him. You know what I mean? He's mm-hmm. not going to win Cleveland any games. Exactly. No, he's just help. not. So, I'm not. I'm. I still give it a couple of years. Obviously, they don't have a quarterback yet. Still trying to figure that out. But I mean, then again, Colin Kaepernick's still out there, and maybe Cleveland Colin does Kaepernick. take a chance on him. You know, so uh, they already got their first overall pick, so they're gonna start making some moves. So we'll see. What that happens. is true. And we're gonna get to start sit cut as well later in the program. Speaking of starting, sitting, and cutting, uh, make sure to join us later on for that. We've got a special one that you used on Pick Six today, but yes. I want to bring it back and talk about right. that one. Among many others as yes. well, once we get into that a little bit later on. Let you know, let us know your thoughts about anything we've hit so far. Uh, preseason games, uh, I mean, that's also the other big question. Would you rather go to a preseason game or not go to a regular season game at all? Like some people, I never get a chance to go to I, regular season games. I could games. care less about the preseason. But would you really go to a go. game, though? Mm, you don't have to. I'm just curious if you would. I don't think I would, would to be no? honest. I don't think I would. Fair enough. I mean, you you only see your guys for a quarter or two, and then I mean, most of the starters don't even play for week three of the preseason or week That's four. True. So, no, I, I, unless there was unless like there was some major uh, controversy or there was like a position battle somewhere, and sure. I wanted to see the two guys that are actually. But you're going to still keep an eye on how the Bills do in preseason. Yeah, you're going to you're going to check the but box scores. But if they scores. go four zero, it doesn't mean anything to me. You're going to check the box scores. You're going to see what yeah. Sammy Sammy W does. And of course, Timmy Tyrod Taylor He's there. Got three, he'll get like three catches. Probably if that or one. Yeah, it'll so, it'll be for like eighty five yards. But I will I will tune in. I will watch to yeah. to see uh, T J Yates and Cardell Jones throw, sling the ball around. Because that's Sling really the, the only time you're going to get to see them play. So I will watch to see uh, how they do. I do always enjoy the back of quarterbacks. So, like, Brett Huntley, when he takes the field for the Packers, I'll certainly be watching that just Absolutely. because he's always fun to see what the future might look like. Uh, Eddie says that Lee was better looking than Katy Perry. So that's uh, – there. if Lee is still watching, <laughs> that's a good way to motivate you through the rest of the day. That's great. David says, what about the experience of being at the stadium and the whatever else the Bills have going on for them? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I – Yes and no. I mean, the preseason, I mean, in-game promotions, I think, are something that you forget about as a fan and never goes to games very often. I mean, you're always at home watching the commercials when, you know, things are going on in the field. They're not cutting to the field so you can watch the 7- and 8-year-old peewee football team tackle each other for 20 minutes at halftime. You're not watching that. So do I think it's cute? Sure. But, like, am I, like, super pumped when they have, you know, the pizza race or, like, 100-yard, you know, 100-yard dash or whatever other random things they do? They're shooting T-shirts into the crowd. Yeah, it's fun, but like I don't, I don't really care. It's not my main reason why I go to games. Right? Yeah, I don't, I don't. I mean, so, sometimes, yeah, you do go for the experience, you know. But in football, it's it, you're you're going for the game. It's always absolutely how football is. No, you know? I, I completely agree. Um, Adam also helping us break the next thing we were actually going to talk about anyway was Deion Jordan as he officially signs with the Seattle Seahawks. The former number three overall pick from the Miami Dolphins has signed with the Seattle Seahawks. The rich get richer. Deion Jordan, a very talented defensive player. Now he decides to go and take his time to the Seattle Seahawks. This could be a possible rejuvenation for the young man after just a very poor run with the Miami Dolphins. Yes. But uh, poor and Miami kind of run together <laughs> because we all know the cartels have all the money. Anyway. Wow. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Moving on. Yeah, okay. What other NFL news is out there, Tanner? What else do we need to let the people know about? There's um, been free agency is always going on. The draft is a couple of weeks away as well. Your father believes that the Bills should draft a quarterback in every round because someone's got to be Jim Kelly. Yes. So who's to say it won't be a guy that comes in every round? Uh, there was a defensive back from uh, Florida State University uh, who apparently was in a road rage incident and pulled out a gun and then continued to get shot in the torso. He's fine. He's in stable condition, but he is no longer a part of the Florida State. I feel like that's the biggest case of karma and or something backfiring on you that it could ever possibly be. I mean, uh, road rage is stupid. 
I don't ever it's, understand that. I don't, yeah. Like, what good is me yelling at you or giving you the finger or trying to run you off the road? Yeah. What is that going to solve? It's not going to solve it's anything. Gonna solve anything. It's going to make more people upset. People are going to throw things. There's so much, you know, stupid. spread love, not, not so war. stupid as well. Or whatever is. they say. Yes. Uh, other NFL things here, of course. You guys <laughs> uh, talked about this briefly on Pick 6 today about Miles Garrett likely going first overall. But then Leonard Fournette also is being rumored to possibly go as the first overall pick. Which would be stupid. Stupid idea, of course. I would hate, I would hate for the Bills to ever draft a running back in the first round. I mean, why would you? I mean, would any of you out there watching, would you draft Leonard Fournette first overall over Miles Garrett or over Mitch Trubisky? I would even take Mitch Trubisky over Leonard Fournette with the first overall pick. And that's You're... saying a lot about Mitch Trubisky, who's played a single season as a starter for North Carolina. Running backs. I mean, here, here's the deal. We talked about this before. When it comes to running backs, you can find somebody who's sufficient enough to carry your team. Yes, it's great to have an elite running back on your team, but you can find somebody to do that. So to waste a first-round pick, a top-10 pick, or a first-overall pick on a running back, it would be like doing the same on a goalie. The last time that happened was Marc-Andre Fleury, who got picked first overall, and he's brought, he helped, he helped uh, Pittsburgh say, win like a Stanley Cup. I feel like he's done pretty darn good overall. He has, but he helped Pittsburgh win a Stanley Cup, but... I mean, let's be real. The only reason why Pittsburgh won a Stanley Cup is because Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin. So, also um, true. Uh, and he didn't even. I mean, he ended up getting sat last year for Matt Murray, who was a rookie, hmm. and Matt Murray played better than Mark Andre Fleury. So, I find it stupid to draft a running back, not just in the first round, but first overall. Right. I mean, the Bills drafted C.J. Spiller in the first round a couple of years ago. Like he wasn't a bad product at a club or something like that. And uh, he was great, but, I mean, he fizzled off. It's just stupid. It's a waste of a first-round pick. That is true. Adam wants to know, Tanner, if you could go round by round, what positions would you draft? We don't have that kind of time, but you can at least give us <laughs> a little Bills. bit of insight. Uh, you know, for the Bills, it's going to be tough. I, mean, I like that the Bills are going out and talking about some of these quarterbacks. They're at least going out and vetting each of the quarterbacks and Deshaun Watson. And, it's and not a bad Mr. idea Bisky. to at least have a conversation. Yeah, they're also looking at some guys later in the draft. So if they don't end up drafting Mitch Trubisky at number 10, uh, I could see them picking somebody else down the way, and maybe it's a, a project that they need to work on. Even with like Cardale, it's the same case. So you know they're not going to start right away. Uh, but I, I, I'm not sure where they go. I, I would say some probably if they don't end up going with a quarterback, they need some wide rec receiver positions to fill, uh, and uh, they they need some help on the defensive side of the ball in regards to our defensive backs. So. According to NFL.com, Leonard Fournette is apparently visiting the Cincinnati Bengals this week. That'll be something to keep an eye yeah, on. Okay. Uh, that's a struggling franchise that has uh, been just kind of crappy with Giovanni Bernard and Jeremy Hill. Those are two fantasy guys every year that it's like they could break out. They could be something. They could be actually an important player. But then you really think about it. It's like, well, they're sharing the carries, and they're just neither of them are that great a running back. So why would you waste your time, money, and a draft pick on somebody like that? So would a guy like Leonard Fournette do well in Cincinnati? Uh, Leonard Fournette in Cincinnati. Um, well, Cincinnati, it's safe to say Cincinnati needs something to get over the hump. Of course. They need something. And, I mean, Andy Dalton, man, just what a disappointing career so far, right. at least. So, uh, I, I mean, if they want to do that with their first pick, then that's fine. You know, I'm, I, if you need a running back, by all means, go out and get a running back. I just don't think a running back should be picked in the first round. Maybe later in the first round, but... It just doesn't make sense in the top ten. True. Trevor on Facebook says that the Bills would love Jamal Adams or Malik Hooker at the tenth overall pick if that does, uh, if they are available. I'm sure at least one of those guys will be available defensively. You agree? Is that where the, the Bills need to go? Yeah. I mean, it's you know, it, there are a hand, there are a couple holes on the roster. The roster itself looks like a pretty solid all around all around roster. Yeah, it's a but, contender. Uh, it all comes down to depth when you start getting guys that get injured. That's the like, huge, okay, maybe huge thing. We're not as set as we thought we were. So, talk to me about Christian McCaffrey out of Stanford because I've seen rumors that he's going to go all the way at 32nd to the New England Patriots. I've seen him rumored to go as high as 17 to the Washington Redskins. There's numerous different possibilities, and of course, nobody actually knows until you really are, you know, there live on draft day. I've even heard that Green Bay could potentially look at him uh, as a possible, you know multi-purpose returner you've also got guys like Jabril peppers floating out there as well too yep. but what does a guy like christian mccaffrey offer to a franchise on the offensive side of the ball uh see when it comes to stanford or any any uh, uh any school in that conference it's i mean you can almost always say it's it's not it's not even near the most competitive conference for football so Especially if you're going to draft a running back in the first round, I wouldn't be drafting a running back out of uh, 
out of uh, the Ivy League. So usually not a smart idea. Stanford though is not in the Ivy League, to my knowledge. Where Stanford is out in the uh, is out in the West Coast, buddy. They're in the same conference as um, mm-hmm. USC and all of them. They're Pac-12 yeah, school, aren't they? Right. Or Pac-10 like or okay. some pack. Okay. Six pack, twelve, 12 pack. pack. I think they're a twelve pack. Pac-12 school. Um. Okay. Um. Well, good friend though. He went to Stanford. <laughs> you know who else went to Stanford? LeVar Andrew Ball. Luck. Oh, LeVar Ball. What? A, no. Oh, okay. Andrew Luck went to Stanford. How'd what that work out his, for him? What has his career been like and, so far? And, and, yeah. Andrew, Hashtag overrated, maybe? Very no, much I would love so. to have Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck. Would you really? Andrew Luck on the Bills? Would that actually yeah. make a Are franchise better? Are you kidding me? Better? 100%. Uh, I mean, be Super that's Bowl a ready. very good question, though. I mean, let us know. Is Andrew Luck overrated? In the, hash, in the comment section below, use the hashtag. And, you know, overrated luck. I like that. Or underrated Over, luck. Overrated luck. Overrated luck. Or not enough luck. Do like, does, like, Harvard still have a football program? Uh, I think so. I don't know for officially. Like Yale. But, I, mean, I think like they do. Yale, Harvard, I think it was Yale. Yale was the, the Harvard, school that yeah. mooned a bunch of people in, in the front row. But Classy. their students, like, just mooned the players. Like, They're like, we're so smart, we're going to moon people. We're going to moon you. And we're Ooh, still... Look at my butt crack. Mm. Yes. Glorious. It's ridiculous. Did you know, switching over to the NBA as we keep flying through here on another exciting edition of Halftime, where we try to give you anything yes. and everything about the sports world in a quick, small, bite-sized manner. Yes. Uh, remember to hit the share button as we roll along to LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Did you know that every time the Cavaliers are not even that? Did you know that every time LeBron James is at a set, is at a two seed on a team, whether it be the Heat or the Cavaliers, he's reached the NBA Finals all five times. No, it's it's LeBron. So even though the Celtics are claiming that number one spot in the East, and everyone's freaking out because oh the Cavaliers they're not as good. No, you don't need to understand. You have it's LeBron basketball. James on your team. You're the gonna better win. team always wins. I don't care matter. if you have Isaiah Thomas on your team. The dude's five foot nine. He's gonna get just absolutely curb stomped by LeBron when it comes to the times mm-hmm. that actually matter. I think that's just a very fascinating stat, though. I think it's. I reached the NBA Finals all five times as a number two seed, whether it be with Miami <clears throat> or Cleveland. The man can't be stopped. He's such a good player. I don't even think he's trying right now. That's the That's scariest part really about don't all of this. I don't think he's trying, and I don't think he cares no. at, at this moment. He's waiting for the playoffs. That's what he's waiting for. Playoffs. 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 So. Yeah, the Boston Celtics have a one-game lead on the Cleveland Cavaliers. 52 wins to their 51 wins. Toronto's already wrapped up. The Likely the third seed, Washington 4, Atlanta 5. Milwaukee finally qualified for the playoffs at 6. Indiana, Chicago, Miami fighting it for those last two spots. Is there anything about the NBA playoff race that you're excited about or looking at trying to you know keep an eye on more so as we get closer to the end of the season? Uh, whether or not Kevin Durant is a good or bad thing. Do you think he's a bad thing? I mean, right now, I don't think he's a bad thing, but he isn't. I mean, he just, I believe it was yesterday, was the, his first game back. So it's his first game with Steph Curry, and they lost to the Utah Jazz 105 to 99. Uh, I'm just interested in seeing their chemistry moving, moving into the playoffs. Right. And what he offers, you know, Golden State. So I don't know if he offers that. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what he does coming off of an injury like that. Kevin Durant, of course, is arguably one of the greatest to play the game. According to many people, I, I would still like to see a little bit more from Kevin Durant personally to, before we start uh, you know, talking about how great he actually is all time. But a very rare talent that doesn't come around very often. You've already got him on a team like Steph Curry, Draymond Green. I mean, mm-hmm. these guys are shooting the lights out every night. Clay Thompson, oh, by the way, you also have Clay Thompson on the team as well too. I mean, these guys can put the ball in the hoop no matter who's on the court with them. And then if you even have a mildly healthy Kevin Durant... No one's going to stop this no, Golden State Warriors still, team. I'm not saying that he's going to hurt the team. He's definitely helping the team. Yes. Uh, but I don't know to what extent is his value. Um, that is we'll a very bad see. point. Well, yeah. That's what I'm watching. So. I'm looking and forward the Bucks, to it. of course. The Bucks are... Yeah, the Milwaukee Bucks uh, are going to be interesting. Team. I think they're going to make a series out of whoever they end up playing. I mean, if they end up being the actual sixth seed, they're going to have to deal with Toronto right off the bat, which I think will be a good test for them. Yeah, I think Toronto can... is a better team overall, but I think Milwaukee will maybe steal two games. They'll at probably least, steal yeah, two games at home, probably. Yeah. Um, another story out there right now. I th- thought I'd bring this up. Please. Uh, <laughs> New York Giants linebacker, also defensive captain. Jonathan Casillas was selected for a random, quote-unquote, random drug test. And Jonathan Casillas does not think it's a coincidence that he was selected for the drug test. Uh, this, this, he was selected one day after posting a picture during a vacation in the Dominican 
uh, with what he claimed was a rolled cigar in his hand. So, and then so the NFL so randomly selected him for a drug test. Randomly selecting people. I mean, how many oftentimes do you see, like, punters or kickers getting randomly drug tested after they, like, post videos of them kicking a ball really far or lifting a lot of weights? I mean, Pat yeah. McAfee, among others from the Colts, was a big guy that I remember always got randomly drug tested after he would do, like, an insane, like, you know, 75-yard punt or – I mean, sometimes, crazy enough, you just actually connect. Your technique actually all lines up at the same time, and it actually just goes boom. And it's like, holy cow, yep. like, I actually am a really good player. It doesn't happen often, but then that's always how you see it. It's like, oh, here's a drug test because you can't kick the ball that far. That's humanly impossible. Yes. It's random, though. Totally random. It is very much like It's like when you get randomly selected to do like the special screenings at the airport, and you're like, okay. It's like are you Is this because you, I'm taking a one way flight from Buffalo <laughs> to Toledo? You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know. Nothing good ever comes out of Buffalo, I guess. Or Toledo. Or Toledo. So they're probably like, We gotta stop it now. Shut them down. Yeah. Shut them down. I mean if I if I've got like these random bulges in my pants, I mean I'm not only happy to see you, but like I might be packing something as well. Jesus. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> uh, whatever. You absolutely never know. I'm touching that. Uh, the NBA jersey sales, the top 15 most popular jersey sales are out. Uh, can you give me a guess of who the top four are? LeBron James, Steph Curry. Um, I want to say Russell Westbrook. But yep, he's is in it? there. Okay. He's at number four. So Kevin Durant. Yep, there you go. Steph Curry's at one, LeBron two, Durant three, Westbrook four. Then you've got Kyrie Irving at five, Kawhi Leonard six, Kristaps uh, Porzingis at I wouldn't seven, have any of those. Jimmy <laughs> Butler at eight, Giannis is uh, at Jimmy nine. But Jimmy Butler is at eight. Yeah, yep. Giannis is at nine. And James All Harden right. is at ten. Wow, MVP, right? Right? Can't even be the MVP <laughs> Can't even of the sell jersey, a jersey sale. with his name on it. How terrible! Go back are to you? Jersey. You idiot. Where, not even where he's from. Is he from Jersey? No, I didn't think so. We're just talking about jerseys. Oh, <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> Too um, funny. Did you know yes. that Tyrod Taylor led the quarterback, all quarterbacks in rushing yards in 2016 with 577 yards? Yes. That was also the lowest total to lead the position since his, 2009. His, uh, that was the lowest total since 2009? That 20. was the lowest league-leading wow. total since 2009. All right. We'll take it. <laughs> and it's like, 2016 all right. wasn't so bad after all. Right. Right. We also led the league in rushing, so... Overall, we were the number one rushing team, and we didn't make the playoffs. So prove, prove my point. Right. Running backs aren't going to win you a Super Bowl. That is a very good point. Adam um, did have a question about Leonard Fournette okay. on Facebook. He says, is Fournette that good that he could be drafted number one overall? No. Simple answer is no. Don't read into it. Don't no. figure out much about him, honestly. Don't waste your breath. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. Don't waste your car. Don't waste your gasoline. Your car. Don't waste your coffee. Um, I th found this was interesting. Please. I don't know if you'll really care, but... Probably not, but uh, never know. Jack Eichel misses $2 million yeah. bonus after finishing one, a decimal point outside the top I 10 in points this. per game. $2 I million. Heard about that. He was a, How old a, is Jackie? a fraction Jackie's of a point. 20, 18, 19, 20 years old? 20 no? years old. Imagine missing out on 20 years old by being a, dec you know, what a decimal is, point away from the, being in the top 10 for points per game. That just is unbelievable. $2 right million. Dollars. That's like literally like... Maybe three more goals, and he would have been in there. Two million dollars. Two million dollars. So what was his what was his tender tender set at then? Like, what was he trying to like hit overall? Um, I mean, he he's making. He was already incredible this season as a whole. Right. He's still in his he's still in his entry level contract, so he's not making a lot of money right now. But he's gonna get. I mean, I don't think he's really worried about it because he's gonna get paid a lot of money when his contract comes up because Buffalo is going to pay him and going to pay him very well. Um. Trying to find his stats here. I'll have that for you in just a second. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yes, here we go. <laughs> uh, but he's, I mean, he was the best. He, 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 he scored more than anybody else on our team. Uh, but he, uh, here we go. So his points per game. Oh, my God, it keeps freaking out. On I was going to say, I was like, where are we going with this? I don't know. Are we going to get there? So he had 61 games played this year. So he didn't play a full season. 24 goals, 33 assists, so 57 points overall. Okay. Uh, not bad. Yeah. So it's not like he is, his stats were awful. No. Connor McDavid was the, uh, was the only one to sole player to hit 100 points this season, I believe. Was it Connor McDavid? I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, yes. Yeah, Connor McDavid, the sole NHL player to hit 100 points on the season. A very amazing year from him. So great job from him. <laughs> Excellent job. Phenomenal. Excellent job. Phenomenal. So here we go. Jack Eichel is at .93 points per game, and at 10th is 
Vladimir Sabatka at uh, one point per game. So Vladimir less Sabatka. Less than a tenth of a point. Wow. Jack is at 14th. Uh, and then at first is Connor McDavid, 1.2. Sidney Crosby, 1.19. And Steven Stamkos at 1.18. And, of course, Evgeny Malkin, 1.16. Of course. Pittsburgh is good. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh Andrew, uh, Adam on Facebook also said, Andrew Luck is a great football team. Uh, player, not team. <laughs> Andrew Luck is decent. He's an okay team, but he's a good player. Yes. The team's okay. Team's an okay. But he, Andrew Luck's a Super Bowl contender, but the team itself, not so much. Not so much. Could be better. Yeah. Could be a lot better. Should we move into start, sit, cut? Sure. Let's do it. All right. Start, sit, cut. That was the question. Sorry. All right. So you talked about this on Pick 6 today, but I wanted to bring it up again because I thought it was a very – um. Very fitting. Okay. Very good. Okay. Very great. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. So um, there was t Titus Young, former Detroit Lions wide receiver, is going to jail for four years yep. after doing something illegal. Yep. I don't remember what it was, but he's going to jail for four years. Uh, and I brought up the uh, the question, and I said, would you rather, or not would you rather, but would you have to start Sid Kutch playing for the Cleveland Browns for four years, playing for the Detroit Lions for four years, or just straight up going to prison for four years? So you have to start one, sit one, and yeah. cut one. You know <laughs> If I have going to prison for four years on my bench, I don't have to go to prison. I'm pretty sure you don't have to, like, live there for four years, but you at least have to sleep there overnights. If you it's can't, on my bench? If it's on your bench. You're not, you're not there full time. Well, I'm going to go with Unqua Asonia's uh, perspective and just say I don't want to go to prison. Nobody wants to go to prison. I wouldn't do well in prison. You wouldn't do well in prison. We're but too I pretty. But I also don't have to start them if they're sitting on my bench. But you still have to at least sleep in prison. For the, sake of, for the sake of the comedy and the humor of it, I'm going to cut the Cleveland Browns mm. again and sit four years in prison <laughs> and start the Lions because wow. I like their jerseys. <laughs> Silver. They're they're played, they play in a exciting. dome. They play in a dome. They've got that going for them. Yeah. I can get on board with that, I suppose. There's probably good food in Detroit. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Bankruptcy, if you like that sort of thing. Gross. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut prison. I'm going to have to sit the lines, and I'm going to start the Browns because I'm going to try to get behind the paleontologist that is Miles Garrett, and we are going to ride that T-Rex right into the playoffs. Perfect. Charge. Charge. Do you have awesome. any starts it cuts for me? I do. Uh, Hit me. Okay, ballpark foods. I got secondary foods. Oof. So peanuts, nachos, soft pretzels. <sighs> start nachos, cut peanuts, sit the soft pretzels. Okay. For me, it depends on depends on the event. If it, from at baseball, I'm getting peanuts all day. I just I would have nachos peanuts any all day. day. Nachos. Uh, so overall, in any venue, I would have to start the nachos, sit the pretzel because I love a good soft pretzel. Sure. And then cut the peanuts. But if I'm in ba if I'm in a, a baseball baseball event, game, baseball game, gotta go that route. Peanuts. I get that. That makes a lot of sense okay. to me. You got another one. Uh, I got one more for you. So okay. retired wide receivers, Calvin Johnson, Jerry Rice, and the great man that is Antonio Freeman. Oh, wow. Um, I feel like you can't not start Jerry Rice. You could not. You could choose not to. Uh, prime of their career. Prime of their careers, Calvin Johnson, Still Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice. Yeah. Yeah, start Jerry Rice. Sit, sit Calvin Johnson because I love Calvin Johnson. Yeah, and then Antonio Freeman's just lucky to be at the party, but he's yeah. not saying much. He's hanging out. He's, he's nobody's really listening to him. He's getting Calvin and Jerry's drinks. He's not actually being <clears> served <throat> any drinks, I feel like. Any other ones from you at all? Um, I'm going to no. take that as a no. Tailgating at events. Tailgating at events, okay. Baseball, football. Do they tailgate soccer? Yeah, occasionally. Okay, baseball, football, soccer. Well, I'm going to cut soccer because it's not very often. Yes. Uh, okay. I'm going to sit football, and I'm going to start baseball tailgating. Hmm. Football is just usually rowdy and It obnoxious. is two completely different styles baseball, of Baseball, you've got, like, the radio on. It's almost you're like you're at, like, a concert. Yeah, yeah, your kids are running around. Football people are swearing, ripping their shirts off, breaking tables, setting things set, on fire. Setting themselves on fire. I, that's just not, that's not conducive to a good family yeah. relationship. It's just um, not going to end up well for anybody. It's safe to say you're getting plastered at a football tailgate. And Always. you're enjoying your time while drinking excessively at a baseball tailgate. Yes. So, uh, okay. I'm going to... Start football only because Bills tailgates ain't nothing like, like a Bills tailgate, up. man. And then uh, I'm gonna sit baseball because I love a good Brewers tailgate. Like if I'm going to a Brewers game or a baseball game, I'm not going for the game. As awful as that sounds, I can understand that. Yeah. I'll watch the game. I will, but I'm there with my friends. I'm enjoying the heat of the summer. 
and I'm eating brats, I'm drinking beers, and I'm playing cornhole, like, in the parking lot. Fair enough. So. Uh, I've got one other thing I wanted to get your uh, reaction to really okay. fast. The University of Maryland President Wallace Lowe called out the University of North Carolina, according to USA Today, saying that um, the um, issues that they had with the, uh, the NCAA investigation about um, the academic scandal, if you remember that, at UNC mm -hmm. while ago, kids were not actually going to class. Yep. Uh, Maryland's uh, president says that the um, abysmal uh, and, and, and – wow, I need to speak. The NCAA's investigation is abysmal, and he also added that the implementation of the death penalty could be a fitting punishment according to the published report. Wow. The death penalty. Oh, my God. It's never a good thing. No, no, it's really not. Um, he said, for the things that happened in North Carolina, it's abysmal. I would think that this that would lead to the implement, impl implementation of the death penalty by the NCAA, but I'm not in charge of that. It's too harsh. So because guys skipped class or faked their grades, you're going to kill them? I, that doesn't make any <clears throat> sense to me. You, you, can't, you can't kill the program. It's no, no, no. Like, he's saying, like, kill the people. It's a death penalty. No, he's talking about... The death penalty, I think he's talking about the death penalty as in what they gave SMU, where you just don't have a program. Possibly. They're not, I don't think he actually <laughs> wants to kill these players. You don't know if that. If he does, oh my god. You don't know that. <laughs> I mean, there could be a double meaning there, I don't know. But uh, regardless, if he's talking about killing the program, I, it, it's, it wouldn't be good for the NCAA as a whole to do true. that. So. That is very it's, true. I mean, regardless, he's talking out of lines. T totally absurd yes. is what it is. You need to be quiet. Sit yeah. down. Shut up, old man. You're out of here. You're, you need some you need some meds. Yes. David says, drinking crappy beer, drinking crappy wine, drinking crab juice. What the heck is crab juice? Ooh, wait a minute. What? Drinking cut, crab juice? I'm going to cut crab juice. Who said that? David. If it was cranberry juice, we'd have a different conversation. Uh, I'm going to cut the crab juice. I'm going to sit the... What do you define as crappy wine, I guess? That's my, that would be my question back to you. Because Gross. You can. There's still good, like three dollar bottles of wine out there. Right? Carlo but like, Rossi. But like the eighty five cent, like <laughs> Milwaukee's best, is like literally drinking water. Yeah. So I would have to sit the crappy beer and start the crappy wine personally. Um, in my professional opinion. Of yeah. Wine. I'm gonna start the beer. It depends on what kind of wine it is, but I'm gonna sit liquor because I know it's there somewhere. <laughs> it's always good to know that it's just hanging around. Yeah. It can get pretty messy pretty quick though. That is true. All right, uh, anything else we should cover before we get out of here? I don't think so. I think I this has been so a good either. time. We, we flew through all kinds all. of stuff. Um, David says, I don't drink wine, so I couldn't tell you what defines crappy wine. Fair enough. Well, maybe uh, Valid point. We'll have to, we'll have to Valid point. revisit that. We'll have to bring some crappy wine next time you're at the studio, David, and we'll figure that out, I guess. So, But uh, Tanner Burke, it's always a pleasure, sir. Special thanks to Lee Nevis as well, too, one of our women's soccer correspondents who swung by earlier. Thanks to all yes. of you that dropped off some great comments and hit the share button as well, too. Remember to keep doing that as well to all the numerous people Eddie, that are out there. Eddie, of course, saying prettier than Katy Perry. This is true. Quite true. Aaron says, I'm here. Adam, Trevor, David, of course, everybody, thank you for oh, commenting. Yeah. You guys are the best. Without you, we're basically just uh, talking to ourselves. Talking to ourselves. Which so. is not the worst thing at times. No. All right, Tanner. Always a pleasure. We'll talk to Always. you back here tomorrow. Half time. I'll be back here tomorrow. Uh, New and Eastern, 11 Central. We'll be back here in Better Than Ever. If not, you can catch us here on Happy Hour at 4 p.m. Central Time. With myself and uh, Charles O'Donnell today, we'll be here giving you all the hot takes that are here in the sports world. Plus, we're going to be drinking while we do it. So what's the worst that could cool. happen? We'll see you guys tomorrow on Halftime. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow.